do that now. Right, so it's we're recording now, so it's just so we don't have to include everything or anything, but we've got it if we want. Yeah, it's just just her uh, because uh, I'm very happy for you to be the author, so to speak, and have it as you would wish. Well, what's at the back of my mind is two things. Um, there's my, you know, there's the sort of my particular experience of doing my PhD and how valuable my ability to access your um, record was for me personally. But then I was thinking beyond that, that actually you've probably got, um, it's probably quite valuable to many people. And I, I know that um, there's the Pamela archive, you know, the, um, what is it, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, yeah. Lithic artifact database. And that was, that was very valuable as well in the British Museum. But I was just thinking, were you involved in that Pamela project? Um, I think so. I think if it was all in that era, I was at the museum uh, and uh, I did take part in everything that was going on, you know. Well, that, that, was, um, that was when Roger died. Yeah. Um, all his paperwork was collated and organised and filed. Yes. So, and I think it's by sight. So you can go to the British Museum and by sight, you can get the file and it's got all these notes in it. As far as I know, they still have all his notes and everything that was in the house uh, went to the museum. If you have a problem with that, there's the uh, lady, um, is it Jenny or? Anyway, I do have the name of the person who was actually doing it all from the house. Yeah. So. But what I what I found useful when I was doing it, because I referred to that and that was incredibly valuable, but so was your material in a different way. Yeah, in yeah. that your illustrations have notes on them that that gave some context to the to Roger's notes, which were in yeah. the archive. So I think they they do two slightly different things, if that makes sense. Yes, One of them so. <laughs> records his thoughts about the particular site, but the your illustrations and the notes provide an, an understanding of his, you know, the practical process of visiting the museum, potentially borrowing the artifacts, yeah. getting you to illustrate them, <laughs> returning them to the museum. So it, it puts those notes into a, a time scale, a date time scale, which yeah. I found really useful. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I've got I've got some questions I was going to ask you. Shall I? Um, yes, please do. Um, well, my first one was to ask you a little bit about your background. However, I've just read the first part of that uh, summary you sent me, and it says you were born in India. Yes. Yes. Wow. So, uh, so India was partitioned in forty-seven. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So, well, further down the note, I say that in forty-seven we came back to England, or we came to England. So, how old were you then? Fourteen. I okay. So, whereabouts in India were you? Right in the south. What was used to be called Madras, and it's I forget the modern name. <laughs> But uh, we were south of Madras. Um, my father was a account chief accountant for South Indian Railways. So he traveled around quite a bit. And I went to boarding school because the, in that bit of India, there were no schools. You all had to move up to the hill district where the schools were. So, uh, and I was there, yes, till I was 14. Uh, but um, I think I say further in the note that we had a neighbor who was an artist and she taught me drawing from about the age of four, I think it was, yeah. And uh, so I was very lucky. I mean, I, I've been drawing all my life um, without really thinking I'm drawing. I just do it rather like I love driving a car and I don't actually think <laughs> yeah. about the gear changes. I just do it automatically. And drawing is like that. So what's the, I mean, this is more of a personal interest, really. 
Was the period in India a positive experience for you? Oh, yes, very positive. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I haven't said in the note, but uh, I spent a lot of my time climbing up trees and reading in trees. <laughs> 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 and um, I, th I also say that um, my father had a barrel of beer in, under the kitchen table always. So I've always been able to have a glass of beer from <laughs> birth. <Right. on. laughs> so it's been a lovely life. I've had a wonderful life. Yeah, I'm 87 now, which um, I'm so amazingly lucky with my careless way of living to be here. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the secret. <laughs> it could be, couldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, the reason I ask that is my dad is, was from India. He was from Gujarat. Oh, right. Oh, gosh. And then in, in 47, with partition, part of his family, because they were Muslim, yes. they moved to Karachi in Pakistan. Yes. And yes. then he, he was the youngest son. So in the 50s, um, essentially, they sent him to Britain. And he ended yeah. up in, in Salford. Um, yeah. Yeah. Salford Tech, doing um, textiles. And then he met my mum. It yeah, was from Salford. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been to India a few times. Well, India once, mm -hmm. Pakistan three times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you been back? Yeah, well, I've been back, but not down south. I've had a meeting on our, uh, the Stone Flintstone Tools meeting in Delhi. So I went and met a friend, uh, well, a girl from America I'd not met before. And then we travelled down to the palaces area on the southwest bit of the promontory and uh, so it was a wonderful experience um, but that I forget I could always look up which year that was but because um, I've kept vast numbers of diaries because I have to keep answering questions for <laughs> things years ago so I've kept the diaries um, so yes so but that's uh, it's something like 10 years ago now, I think, that uh, okay. the, the, the meeting in De it was a lithic study meeting. So uh, you didn't go to that one. No, I mean, I've not done uh, part of the reason I did a PhD based in UK was because um, our daughter's 19 now. Right. It really suited me to, to be based in England and foreign travel. Mm. Because I think because I did a lot of it when I was younger, we went, like I said, went to Pakistan three times, <laughs> India once. I'd love to have gone there, but I didn't, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I don't feel the need now to travel yeah. internationally because I've, I've had a good opportunity mm -hmm. to do that when I was younger. And now I'm yeah. very happy to go and hold in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Yes, one does change one's ambitions, as it were. Um, as time goes by, yeah. Well, so the, the other thing I was <laughs> I was going to ask you about because when um you, you're quite well known as well because didn't you do some work for um an animation company? Yes, I did. Yes, yes. Um, that is in the note. Uh, I think anyway, it's in one note I wrote, um, and. Uh, Yes, I did. when I left art school, I went to repertory theatre in Reading, and some one of the and in those days actors and actresses used to come from London, and uh, not you know some of them uh, for a particular show, and um, so she said, "Come up to London and do uh, whatever theatre." And so in those days, you could rent a room anywhere, particularly in the Earl's Court area, which is where John Ryan, who did Captain Pugwash, was the Earl's Court area. And so I met him probably in a pub because we all yeah. <laughs> um, met in. There was a very nice pub, which I've uh, been to since. It now has sofas and armchairs, but in the old days, it didn't have any seating. You just stood with your pint mug in your hand. And uh, I somewhere got the name of the pub, 
Um, but I've been recent, fairly recent within the last, again, six or seven years I've been. And so it was still there then. And uh, so then I, that I worked for John Ryan and we used to do filming at the television center. And that was where I met um, the man who did the puppet theater. And so I then worked for him as well, because it was all like part, you know, not full time. It was just when particular shows were being um, put out on the TV or whatever. So, so when you say work, what, what were you doing? Um, I used to do the drawing, help with the drawing and with the puppet theatre making the clothes. And um, also if the, the producer like John Ryan would be behind the cam with the cameraman and then I would move the pictures. And um, so I was always there for when the production was filmed in the television centre, which was great fun because we um, all, you, you could have a meal there and spend the day there while you went around through the program. And uh, so, <clears throat> so we used to spend about a month drawing and animating the pictures. And then we'd spend a day down at the television center actually filming them. That was the old television center, not the new one now. It was at the one at Shepherd's Bush, which was, um, it was very nice, yeah, very easy. I have no problem parking even. <laughs> so how did you transition into archeological illustration? Um, there, uh, somehow or other, I was working at the British Museum archeology span section. And as you can tell, I've always been a big chatterer. And um, whoever was in there, um, particularly, um, was, oh gosh, he's died. Um, anyway, uh, name I'm, it will come back in about 10 minutes, I imagine. Um, and uh, he was chatting. And I first did some uh, drawing for him because he was interested in the um, lithics. It's always has to be some, which is where I worked for Roger Jacobi so much. I met him at the British Museum. Um, that uh, you, a lot of prehistorians are really only interested in the pottery and the metalwork. And uh, so it's the people who are interested in the flint work that I, obviously chatted with mostly and did some odd drawings for, for people who were promoting flints as it were, which is what I always trying to do. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about your illustration methods because- Yes. Yeah, I was just one, mm -hmm. wondering about your particular methods and I know you've published, is it two, have you published two books? At least two on drawing, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so how how do you go about it? One, one of them was with Alan Savile. I expect you know his name. Yes, Alan I've worked with as long as with I did with Roger Jacoby, but less concentrated. But um, I've known him equally as, as long, and I've done a book on illustrating flints with him. I don't know if you've got I've seen that one or got a copy. No, I've got a copy of your book um, about lithic illustration, but not. Oh. Um, uh -huh. yeah. Good, that's that's good. Um, I'll see where there are. I know I did a book with Jill Cook on the history of uh, pre prehistoric flints in central India, but we did. We I think we produced about fifty copies, and then. It, and apart from me, nobody else wanted a copy. So they binned the lot at the British Museum, binned the whole thing, because they were for sale at the British Museum bookshop. They didn't sort of expand uh, the books into other places where I'm sure they would have sold, you know, but it wasn't my job. I couldn't. Yeah, yeah. Them. But, so so if, if, let's go back to your methods. If, if I was to ask you to illustrate um, some finds from a site, some lithics, how, what, what would be the process? How would you go about it? 
Uh, that would be lovely. Uh, what I do is I do it all on paper and I do a pencil around the outline and then I have tracing paper and I lay that over the flint and trace the main crests between the main flakes and transfer that, but measuring. So I know I've got, because you know, there's perspective. So yeah. the ones on the side will be smaller than the ones in the middle, as it were, than yeah. they are. Uh, and then I put, then I'm very fussy about where the flaking has come from, which bit of the edge has the flaking come from? Because sometimes with the makeup of the flint, uh, there is a distortion of the curves, which I like to include, but not to lose where the blow for removing that flake comes from, where it is situated. So it's a, a technical drawing, basically, um, not, not necessarily a pretty one. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's all in pencil at this stage? So I do it in pencil and then I send a copy of the pencil to whoever is employing me, so to speak, and say, please correct, you know, that you think that's what you want, because sometimes particularly Roger wanted something different emphasised. Uh, so that's fine by me. And um, then you alter the pencil drawing and then if that's okay, you do the inking up of the pencil drawing. Uh, just me putting a pen, I've got a repeater craft pen, just nice fine point. And um, I ink up on the pencil lines. So uh, it's the same, the same drawing, but uh, with ink. Um, that's merely for the point of view that pencil rubs and smudges whereas ink obviously doesn't it stays crisp and clear which yeah. is uh, what are i you, are you drawing but, on the tracing paper no no that's all on um the sort of best um smooth drawing paper um that you can buy uh, i've got one somewhere um a pad a pad of pages a4 pages and yeah drawing pad it's a drawing pad when i looked at um, roger's archive he he used to draw the lithics as he was um looking at them quite often he used a biro if when you were working with him did you did you have a, did you see his drawings before you did yours or or <laughs> did you do it separately and then you compared i them? used to do it separately because he didn't always show me what he'd done, he just passed on the flint and said, draw it, you know. But he'd say which way up he wanted things and how many views. And it, that's where I learned to do a top view, a back view and a side view. I always do three views and uh, to get the, over, you know, the whole shape of the piece. Yeah. So it's, I'm fascinated, as you can tell, I'm absolutely hooked on flints, worked flints. Wherever I go, I'm always tripping up looking for the uh, flint, particularly I go with the family to the seaside and along the beaches on the east coast. Um, we all pick up flints and I dump the ones that are natural and hang on to the ones that are, are real. Yeah, real yeah. work. Yeah. I, I do the opposite in that I'm interested in experimental archaeology and right. making stone tools. So I, when we visit the East Coast, I come back with loads of nodules. Because oh. obviously in Manchester, you've not got any access yeah. to, yeah. to yeah. Flint. Yeah, oh, lovely, lovely. So if I go up the East Coast and see someone picking up nodules, I shall say, hello, John. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect I'm not the only one, you know. Well, I don't know. No, no, I think not, no. In the old days, one was the only person doing it, but now I, it's very nice, more people are looking on the beaches, aren't they, for different things that they're interested in. Uh, no, yeah. very interesting. Mm -hmm. So to go back to your work with Roger, um, yes. which I suppose is my primary interest because it was valuable to me. I was interested in a particular period, um, the early Upper Paleolithic in Britain, and 
But I know that he worked across a number of periods, didn't he? Yes. He wasn't just interested in that one. And you worked with him on publishing. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to know what periods you've worked on together, because I suppose that could be of interest to other researchers. Right, right. Now, my geriatric brain, I, I can look it up for you and, and post a message if that's all right. Because... Or are there, are there any ones that, you, that particularly stand out for you? Um, memorable. Yes, uh, the lower Paleolithic, the lovely hand axes are, you know, obviously very dramatic and uh, lovely to draw. But I also like Neolithic tiny pieces, but I haven't drawn those for Roger. I've drawn those for other people since, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Did I say I've done this book with Alan Savile? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did all periods with Alan, so uh, any books that uh, I think I've done two books with Alan, one fairly recently, and um, the chap who is, I think, still curator at um, Edinburgh Museum, he produced the last work because poor Alan had gone on. Um, but I then, but I'd originally drawn for Alan years before as well. Um, yeah. So, and and because you're illustrating all periods, was that like um, a compendium kind of book, bringing together the prehistory of Scotland or something like that? Yes, yes, yes. I would okay. check up on uh, all, you know, all that I could, and Roger and Alan would send me. Um, paper copies of um, what the, their ambition was to achieve, the types of page layout and things like that. Um, but because um, now when I draw for individuals, um, usually amateurs, and they're publishing them in the county journals, uh, they don't um, have a page size or how they're going to print it. So sometimes they're a bit muddled up, you know, yeah. but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. As long as they get printed and published is the important thing, I think. So what about your own archive, your own record of the work that you've done? Um, yes, I've got it all since day one. Filling up uh, the house here is I have... Uh, a room which is a cupboard which is a room <laughs> and the hallway is absolutely stuffed full of books um, they go right back to Victorian publications and um, up to today you know the whole selection yeah. which is what, great. What about the record of your illustrations the work that you've done? Uh, no I haven't ever done that yet. But, because uh, when I um when I was doing my research, you were kind enough to invite me over to have a look at your records. Oh, um, great. And um, So you came I, to 27 Sandwich Close? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, yeah. That would have been, I, I think that would have been 2014, 15, something like that. Oh, that even right. Been 13. Yeah. No, yes, yes, yes. That begins slowly to percolate into me. I was I thinking think we met, about much earlier. Because mm -hmm. we met at um, a Lithic Studies Society event in France. That's Hans. what I think, yes. And then, and I knew that you'd illustrated all those things that I was researching and we got chatting. And I, th yeah. I can't remember if it was, and I think we went all went for a drink afterwards. But I can't remember if it was then or later you suggested I come and visit. And we were having a family holiday yeah. um, in the area. So I came over for the day and you showed me your personal records. So some, yeah. of, some of them were photocopies of your technical drawings. And, good. and that was really, really useful to me. Oh, good. I'm so pleased. Uh, yes. Yes. No. Well, how, whenever it was you came and saw it, it's exactly the same. Nothing's changed. <laughs> so what? What does it look like, your person, you know, how how do you curate your own work? 
is it systematic or is it probably a bit like my filing system? I've got a file with all bits of paper stuck in it that are more or less relevant to whatever the project is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine is a bit that way, but what I do, I do file it by date. The front of the drawers, I've got two big, huge filing drawers and the front ones are the most recent and the one at the back are the earlier one, the earlier publications. But yeah. uh, the periods are all just by the date I've done them. So what we can do is we could perhaps try and put together um, a bibliography of the work that you've done. Um, and I'm thinking that any researchers who are looking at a particular thing could then get in touch with you if there was any questions about any particular aspects. But I don't know, is that something you would like to happen or would you prefer? Yes, I think that would be very useful and would use the material, which um, would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, because as a, with my own stuff, what I realised, um, the the key text for me was um, the 2007 paper about beadings. Yes. Which you did virtually all the illustrations for, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, but when I actually went to visit the museums to look at some of the artifacts, not the beadings collection, yeah. Robert borrowed them, but had died before he could return them. Right, yeah. And so, some of the artifacts that I was trying to analyze had gone missing, gone AWOL, uh, uh, but you had drawn them before um, he borrowed them so that you could draw them. Right, and therefore, yeah. I was able to use your technical drawings to oh, get things like mm -hmm. metrics um, mm -hmm. from. So that was that was really valuable because otherwise I would have had a big I would have had a hole in the yeah. corpus, which is not a massive corpus anyway. And that was really I so, valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't underestimate the value of your own records. And they're not necessarily the same as the records that in the Pamela archive, but they're complementary. Or oh, that yeah. was my experience. Right, right, yeah, yeah. No, because um, uh, Roger, it wasn't just me who, helped. Um, there were, I think, six girls. And at his funeral, we all six sat together and, and discuss, discussed our work with Roger, which was amazing, fascinating, you know, because um, it included, he, he would only um, ask girls to work for him if they could drive and could take him to museums. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so as well as drawing, you had to have a car and could drive. Yeah. So, so would, you, would you go on the museum visits with him? Uh, yes, I, I can remember going to um, not only museums, but the cave sites up, up in the Midlands. I went with him there, the ones um, around the lake, um, the very famous caves. Cresswell Crags? Yes, that's it, Cresswell Crags. Yes, I went there with him. And also I went to... Um, uh, the, uh, the chalk pits one, um, chalk, it's in the same, roughly same area, county. Um, anyway, I can, I'll dig it up, I think it's somewhere, because I went with Roger to them, and then I went later on my own steam, I think, because in latter years, I like driving, as I'm saying, so I go around to different museums and uh, don't necessarily borrow the pieces, but just make a note that the museum has these particular flint. Uh, flint. Yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah. So who were the other illustrators that you were chatting to? Yes. Oh, who, who were, were they? Um, oh, gosh. I've got them all written down somewhere. Um, Jenny Brown. Do you know Jenny of the name Jenny Brown? I suspect you've given me their emails in the past when I was chasing up the other illustrations. Yes, yes, should it should be. But um, I've got Jenny Brown, I think, was the most recent one. And um, she used to travel and 
even to France, she went to museums to check for Roger. Uh, and I'm still in touch with Jenny. So, because she's obviously much younger than me, being the most um, recent illustrator. Uh, so I can, I've got her address. I could give you her address and if that would be any help. Um, yeah, and I think you have, I, as I say, um, I think in when I was doing the looking, you did send me quite a lot of information about other illustrators for particular pieces. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, they've all kept, well, Jenny hasn't. She had a, a family and she's now doing granny work mainly. But um, up until um, about three or four years ago, she was working for the, um, the Plymouth uh, storage for um, published material. I forget what, County Council, that's it, she was working for. Plymouth County Council, but she's yeah. stopped that in recent years. So, uh, yeah, but she did keep going in the prehistory world. Yeah. Do you know any new illustrators, any illustrators that are using, um, you know, digital technology? Um, I can't think of any offhand, but again, I'll look up my notes um, because because I can't remember doesn't mean I didn't know them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I think that's the same for all of us. Yeah. Uh, and in relation to the Lithic Studies Society, have you been doing anything recently? Have you been um, to any I of their events or? I haven't been doing anything for them, but they do keep me in touch and uh, send me notes and things. Yes. Yeah, so um, I have a vague knowledge of what the the um, system is and uh, I was amazed when I did go to a couple of meetings up until the um, lockdown bit began yeah and um, I was so interested because there were I think three um, three girls from America and uh, so they were learning what was going on in Britain and that was that was useful to know yeah uh, I think I said to you when I told I had a conversation with Matt Pope and I said I was going to get oh, in touch yes. with you and he sends his regards. Oh, well, please send him all the very best too from me. Um, yeah, Matt, yes, gosh. Where is he working now? I think he's still, um, he's working at UCL um, oh, yeah. and he's still living in Sussex um, oh, from what I can gather. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So have you got any thoughts about what you would like to contribute to this Lithic Study Society um, event? I, I haven't thought of anything. I mean, the note I've sent you, and I think you say you've got just, just now, uh, yeah. the importance of stone tools, that is my main sort of heading as well of interests, the importance, because the fact that I, I get, I'm a member of the Suffolk Archaeology and History, and in the last two years, their annual reports, one of them had no illustrations of Flint in, and one of them had one illustration of a Flint. So um, I think this feeling that metal brooches and coins are much more important is, is not my belief <laughs> in that. So, no, I know, I know. We're, so, uh... that, so my enthusiasm is to just get out there and find other people interested in flints to, to keep the study going on, on flint yeah. tools. Uh, I'm, so, I've, I'm now, I've got a, I'm writing up something for our local paper. And I'm so aware recently that people in prehistoric times, I'm fairly sure did pick up flints that were roughly the shape they wanted and even might have some natural pieces removed. And then they made big curves and you can see their flint napping very clearly and or points and turned in the piece to points. And that is common sense. Why pick up something you've got to spend hours napping when you can pick up something that's roughly what you want and shape wise. And um, so I've done a drawing I'm just finishing off a drawing of a piece with 
a very big curve and um, a pointed area uh, on an otherwise natural piece. But it's not modern because in the flint removals, the spaces are white. They've been patinated white. So yeah. they're, um, that's, that's the sort of games I play at the moment. Yeah. Um, Have you ever had a go at making stuff? I tried napping flint, but I'm no good. All I do is I crush the edge. I don't have the blow to remove flakes. All I do is go crush, crush, crush. So no, I uh, gave up on that one. Yeah. But I thoroughly encourage anyone else to do flint. Yes, and of course there's um, the East Anglian man who does flint napping and his son does flint napping. John um, Lord. And That's Will it, Lord. the Lord family, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I've been to a couple of talks of John Lord's, but um, and I used to have the odd note from his son, but um, I think he's away busy or doing something different, I'm not sure. Yeah. I think, no, I think he's, um, he's still doing it. I know I, I went to see John Lord not so long ago, three years oh. ago, because... Um, <laughs> Because, mainly because I wanted to, because I, I, when I was doing my undergraduate degree, I got a bursary to work with him for three days. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And it was fantastic. He's a lovely person yeah. and very welcoming mm -hmm. and very skillful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, good places, yeah. yeah and, mm -hmm. and more recently, one of my colleagues at Manchester had found some rock crystal. Oh, yeah. And, and it had been napped. And they wanted to see how rock crystal would nap, but we needed somebody who knew what they were doing, somebody mm -hmm. who was experienced. And because I was going to see him anyway, um, I took this rock crystal with me and he made, um, he showed us how to nap or oh, how he would nap rock crystal. Yeah, yeah. But his yeah. son, um, his son's still doing exactly the same thing. Oh, good, but, good, good. Well, mm -hmm. I think he's more active. Uh, John Lord's doing, mm -hmm. you know, he's doing less now. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to mm -hmm. do as much. I would and... think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he's but, he must be not far off my age, I would think. Yeah, I don't know how old he is. Um, he's in good shape last time I saw him. Oh, good. Um, mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's it. Flint keeps you going. <laughs> so have you got a bibliography of your publications? Is no, that... I haven't saying I haven't, but um what I will do is go through the things on my shelf and do and uh, note make notes. Now, would that include publications in journals like Sussex Archaeology and History and uh, yeah, I mean, Archaeology I... and History? I think there's two ways of doing it. Um, there's the publications that you're the primary author of, like your books and probably yeah. like those where you've illustrated something for... Um, for somebody else, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then there's the stuff like for Roger Jacobi where you, you've been the primary illustrator at a number of key... Yes. Like yeah. on a number of key papers. So I'd say mm -hmm. that 2007 one. It was mainly about beadings. You did most of the illustrations. I think you did all the beadings illustrations. I did do, yes, as far as I know, yeah. But then he drew, he 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 brought in some illustrations he'd had done previously for other papers to compare with the beadings material. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the first half of the paper is all your illustrations and the second half yeah. he's got some of yours but some of other people's as comparative examples. Right. Mm -hmm. But... I was thinking, you know, I suppose at the back of my mind, I'm thinking people who are perhaps researching a topic and they've run into a dead end. Mm. If if you've done the illustrations for um, a particular paper that's relevant to their topic, right? Yeah, that might yeah. be of interest to them. You could might be able to help in some way or other. Just even if it says where they are in the in which museum, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. things like that, because a little bit, uh, and this is a sort of another theme, really, but a bit like you were describing that um, when you met people in the pub in London and, and then you started doing the work there, 
I think a lot of how how our careers develop is who we connect with along yeah. the way. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, like we had a conversation at the Lithic Studies Society. Then I ended up coming to yours, mm -hmm. looking at your record. That affected how I understood the material I was looking at, mm -hmm. and it added yeah. to the corporate. You know, so that thing of being able to connect with each other and each other's yeah. research and not just there's a lot of information that goes into a paper it's not actually yeah. embedded within the finished product yeah yeah and some you know it's a little bit i always find the acknowledgement section of papers really fascinating yeah me too yeah. because it, you suddenly realize oh these people knew each other and they were working mm. together and yeah and you see connections there, and then it makes sense of um, yeah. the bigger yeah. picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because I I forget who my connection was, but it got me traveling northern Germany to museums, and a very nice curator. I think that was it. Curator for one of the North German museums came over to the BM, uh, the British Museum, and uh, I met him and chatted, and then he said come and I'll show you the ones in my museum, the Flints, and then in sort of pass you on, as it were, to the other museums not far away, which is what I did. And that was absolutely fascinating. Yeah, because uh, it, uh, it makes me feel even more so being able to do that, that the connection we have with Northern Europe is very strong, you know, all through prehistory, I think. Well, we now know the North Sea wasn't there. It was more a soggy yes. valley with the rivers. And I think, yeah, the traveling to and fro was amazing what was going on in very, very early times. Yeah. 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 Which is, but that's it. It's if you go to museum, but um, it does help if you're good at chatting as well, <laughs> to meeting people. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. It's an invisible yeah. skill, isn't it? It's not yes. one that you get on your CV, yeah. but it's probably yeah. instrumental in what yeah. you get on your CV. Yeah. yeah, I was very lucky in the school I went to taught acting. And so we were standing on stages, speaking loud enough to be heard at the back of the hall. We were taught that and uh, <laughs> fairly obvious. Uh, it's, um, helps through life for me yes definitely yeah. Yeah. on a, a sort of final um theme one of the things that i find really interesting now is the ability to read a stone tool and how you know a, a little bit like you were saying before about drawing or driving now when i look at something i'm i'm translating it what went on what order did things happen in what kind of tools were they using yeah. Well, you know how well did they do it um mm. and i really value that now um yeah. it took a long time to get anywhere useful with it and a lot of hard work but now i can do it i find it fascinating yeah. you know you can find even the simplest tools really interesting mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes I, i'm so with you on that one particularly um, with the flints, whether they were using bone or metal or wood, and that in a lot of cases is reflected on the flaking. Yeah. Uh, but you've got to have time to carefully look at it and not, you know, and, um, sort of really make it a hobby as well as a professional job. Yeah, you've job. got to have that fundamental interest, otherwise, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't um, really get to that yeah. level, I think. Yeah 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 definitely at least that's how i see things yeah but um yes i i've i work a lot for um amateur collectors uh over the years um but i'm usually only in contact with them for a few months and then they've vanished off into somewhere else you know but um i did do some work for lad in a valley in Essex and he used to just he drove his parents bonkers he wasn't all that generally bright so he'd take his armchair and into the valley and sit down and <laughs> look for flints <laughs> seated and then move the chair and look for an, in another area you know and uh, I thought it's marvellous how flints can entertain 
all sorts of different people. You know, it's uh, something that they can, if it's something you can just pick up beside your chair in the valley, yeah. um, that is very useful for different people. Yeah. As um, I'm just thinking out loud, do, do you have any favourite drawings? Because we could use them thematically. We could um, yeah. have, if you've got favourite drawings that you'd like to talk <laughs> about. Drawings, yes. Yeah, to illustrate. Yeah. That mm. would illustrate two things. It would illustrate your work, also yeah. your your take on it, yeah. but also it yeah. would do that thing of alert people to the kind of areas that you've got knowledge about. Yes, John Weimer is one of my heroes. Um, and I haven't put him on my list, strangely. Um, but uh, he was coming to the London meetings um, to quite recently. Well, I imagine he's not here any longer, but um, up until about five or six years ago, I think he was coming to Lithics meetings, dear old mm -hmm. John Weimer. Yeah, I've known him since day one as well. Well, I knew him since. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah if you've got any images in your mm -hmm. collection that you particularly like perhaps we could do something with those yes well. yeah. yes yes well um certainly john weimer drawings because um uh he knew what he was doing you know he knew about the flaking of the pieces and everything so we could another way of doing it would be to have a john weimer drawing Yes. A Roger Jacobi drawing, an Alan Saville drawing. Yes. And you could, that would be a really nice way of illustrating your career as well, wouldn't it? It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Could you dig out um, what I you can... think are representative images from those different, not periods, but, you know, those different work relationships? Yes, I could do. I'd love to do that, in fact, pick out illustrations of these people that uh, whose drawings influenced my drawing yeah well I, all right if if you can do that we could perhaps have another zoom meeting mm. and you could talk through them and then on the actual you know when we do the lithic studies thing we could have the image yeah and then you, you talking about it and that peer mm. you know that relationship between you and john weimer you and roger jacobi mm -hmm. you and alan savile mm -hmm. yeah a, a, a really nice record, not just of you, not just of the drawings, but of the relationships that... Yes, the work relationships, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, that's the real, again, it's one of those really valuable things, isn't it, that gets yeah. missed out. You know, you might see a load of names at the top yeah. of um, a paper or in the acknowledgements, mm -hmm. but in many ways... Because I also illustrated for Jill Cook. Uh, I was thinking I've just mentioned the men I worked for, but I worked for Jill Cook, who was a British Museum, in, I think senior, she's senior in the staff there, and yeah, then yeah. she le left, and I did a book with her. The uh, India book. That's it, the India book, yes. <laughs> uh, so, um, oh yes, I did mention that earlier, I think, yeah. But um, I don't, yeah, so you could include her as well. Yeah. Well, if, if you can, yeah, if you could dig out an image for each of those people that you like, and if you can think of any more. Right, oh, yeah. And we can use that to structure the, di the mm. discussion. Yeah. yeah, that's an idea, isn't it? It yeah. is because it, it encapsulates a period and um, mm -hmm. a person and any, and, as I say, any researchers who are interested in that area, that subject area, yeah. could then mm -hmm. realise, oh, actually, there yeah. might be something here for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, um, I'll when I um, stop talking with you, I'll write this <laughs> all down and um, look up all these people and go through my library of books and see where they, I know I've got lots of John, not lots, but at least three or four John Weimer books. So um, there'll be some nice drawings of his in them and, uh, and the other people, you know. Yeah. And I've got obviously the copy that I did with Jill Cook uh, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, Roger, lots and lots of books. 
I think I think there is one with a picture of him in a photo of him. Um, but I'll check on that. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Should we? Um, I've I've got to go into university now. <laughs> if, um, <laughs> yeah, thank we've you. been locked out. We've been locked out for um, the majority of the year, but mm-hmm. we've got a cool room, you know, for keeping samples in. All right. Oh. And, it's, and it's broken. <laughs> So yeah. I've got I've got to go in and get it repaired. Mm-hmm, That's my mm-hmm. job for this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Because you had thought you were off for the whole of today, but now you're going in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but it's a pleasant day. You know, we're mm-hmm. having our chat. Then I'm going in. Mm-hmm. I've got a load of little jobs to do, so I'm very happy to, you know, go in. Somebody yeah. will come and fix the cool yeah. room, and I'll mm-hmm. get all my little jobs out yeah. of the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd been uh, also the thing obviously has fascinated me saying you've got an India background. I know. Uh, I know. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Because it's always been uh, my family would say to you that, you know, my um, background of India has always been so important. Uh, because, um, well, just quickly, knowing you must go, um, I had obviously ayahs looking after me so I had very little input from parents and what fascinates me when I go around England and people have lived here always they will talk about their mum and dad and grandparents I had almost no contact I certainly had no contact with grandparents Uh, but I had much more uh, contact with the local families, because we used to put up a whole lot in on our grounds, you know, and I would play with the little children. So that was my background. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, one of uh, the things, one of the things I really valued about, especially in the 1970s, which is when yeah. I first went, was the food. The food yeah. was amazing. Yeah. And when you get Indian and Pakistani food now in Britain, it's much more like meat and two veg. Yes. Whereas when I was there, you, there was a bowl of curry in the middle and everybody had chapatis and you would dip your chapatis yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. It was much more communal, the eating yes. experience. Yes, communal eating, yeah. Yes, that's what I, I remember, yeah. No, my father went to India in 1925 and he met up with an Indian who... Uh, ran our house for us all the staff and he used to organize the cooking and what food and we had pigeons in a pigeon hut and I imagine we had some of those for meals Um, so he was pretty varied um, on his menus that were the food that we had that was in holiday times otherwise that was school meals (laughs) right (laughs) But uh, yes, yes, but it's so different to what families have lived here in England in particular, with grandparents, great grandparents, great great grandparents, and uh, yeah, yeah. No, because I've I've been remarried about uh, four or five years now, I suppose, uh, or maybe no, no, it's a long wait, longer. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll cut that bit out. <laughs> but but he will talk about his great great grandparents and cousins and aunts. I said, I've no, idea. I've never met any, never heard of their names, nothing on my family. Uh, it's completely different. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, anyway, I can. I can All right. Well, you... Let's keep in touch, and if you can um, have a route round and see which. Of your drawings, your life yeah. that represent yes. your Weimar years, your Jacobi years, your Jill Cook years, mm. and then we'll we can perhaps have another Zoom. Yes, that would be lovely. Yeah. There's no rush. I think it's it's in July or June sometime, so we've got time. Good, right ho. Yeah, and I've only got one little article to squeeze in, and then I can I'm concentrate entirely. Or I will mix the two which is what you know to actually work on i won't finish one and then go yeah, on the yeah. other. i do the two yeah and if i have any um, big mistakes i'll get back to you and say okay. <laughs> that wasn't me that was someone else <laughs> <laughs> all right right
Anyway. Right, I'll speak to you soon then, Hazel. That, Thanks very that's much. That's lovely, John. Thank you very, very, very much for sparing all this time this morning. No, no, yeah. it's my pleasure. Goody, good, right. good. Goodbye for now. Bye. Bye. Um.